So uh, I'm Julia Keniston, and basically I'm going to talk about lumps and bumps and different masses that you see in the hand and wrist. So this is my background. Uh, I joined the group about 11 years ago. I am board certified in orthopedics as well as hand surgery. My fellowship was at Brown in Rhode Island Hospital. Uh, my orthopedic residency was at Penn. For my MD, I went to Tufts, and then undergrad was University of Chicago. So there's a lot of common causes for masses that can happen in the hand and wrist. And I know it seems like a long list, but I'll go through them pretty quickly, all right? So basically, I'm going to talk from proximal to distal in the hand, starting with ganglion cysts. So this is the most common mass that you see in the hand. So it can happen either on the back side of the wrist or on the volar side. Uh, most commonly, it happens in women more than men, but it also happens more commonly on the back side of the wrist. So these cysts are accentuated with wrist hyperflexion. You can see that mass more um, readily. And then on the volar side, it happens on the uh, palmar side, but more towards the thumb. Uh, the dorsal cysts are usually seen in the younger population, and the volar cysts are more in the older. So treatment for ganglion cysts. There's really only three things that you can do for a ganglion cyst. So the first is conservative things, rest, ice or heat, anti-inflammatories, either the oral or the topical. Um, you can try splinting as well. Uh, the other two options are aspiration and cortisone injection or surgical excision. So with the aspiration, so the picture here depicts that. With the aspiration, you do need a large bore needle though, because it is really thick viscous fluid that's in it. It's, even though it seems like a water balloon of fluid, it's not really like water, it's more like hair gel, so it's really thick. Um, with the aspiration and cortisone injection though, the recurrence rate is approximately 60 to 70%. So there is surgery also to take the cyst out. And when you take the cyst out, you actually trace it back down to its root, either at the ligament or the joint capsule. And with surgery though, there is a 30% recurrence rate. And then actually Michelle reminded me earlier, there is a fourth option. So they are called Bible cysts. So you can also take a big book and smash your wrist too. And you could rupture it that way as well, but it's not really recommended. So carpal bossing is also something you can see on the dorsal aspect of the wrist. And this is often mistaken for a ganglion cyst. The difference is that the ganglion cyst is really a soft, more kind of mobile little mass. And the carpal boss is more of a firm, um, type of feeling because it's a bony prominence. Uh, this happens in both men and women equally. The cause of it can be um, a lot of different things. You know, some people think that it's congenital or it's where the wrist extensors insert into the wrist there and that just pulls the bone causing this prominence. A lot of people see it after trauma or overuse, so some people will associate it with those things. And then of course degenerative changes can cause the bone spurs and cause that prominence in the area. So the diagnosis of it is based on um, the exam or how it feels, as well as on radiographs. So on the plain x-rays, the AP and the oblique views, you really can't see it. But in the lateral view shown here, kind of where the arrows are and where the red circle is, you see that prominence of that bone. Um, so treatment for these, similar to almost everything in orthopedics, rest, ice or heat, anti-inflammatories, either the oral version or topical, um, splinting as you need it. You could also try cortisone injections for this problem, um, which can help decrease some of the inflammation in the area if they have a lot of pain. There is surgery to remove the carpal boss, but these aren't as successful as you hope they would be, mostly because the tendons do insert there, so there's a high complication rate. So moving farther into the hand, on the palmar side, one of the main causes that I see down here of bumps and lumps in the palm is the Dupuytren's contracture. So Dupuytren's is a progressive disease, but it's painless. So it's um, basically, if you have Dupuytren's, there's a specific cell in it that causes it to start clumping together. So it's just clumping of the fascia right under the skin. The difference between Dupuytren's and regular fascia is really the collagen makeup. So for regular fascia, it's mostly type one collagen, but with Dupuytren's, it's more of the type three, which is more like scar cartilage or scar uh, collagen that's in there. Uh, the cause is largely unknown, but there is a genetic component to it because we do see it mostly in people of Northern European descent and it does affect men more than women. So in terms of treatment options for the Dupuytrens, um, as long as you can kind of lay your hand flat on a table, you don't have to do anything about it. But as the Dupuytrens progresses, it can cause the fingers to kind of curl up. So once you can't lay your hand flat on the table, that's when we think about doing treatment for it. So we call that a positive tabletop test. So the three main ways to treat this um, are listed here. 
The needle aponeurectomy is really a way to um, just kind of cut where that cord is to straighten out the finger. So this is a blind procedure though. You take an 18 gauge needle and you can kind of cut that um, almost like rope-like structure and then straighten the hand out. But because it's a blind procedure, the risk of injury to nerves and vessels is kind of high, so I don't actually do this procedure. It has been reported to work very well and it's done very often um, in I think New Jersey and New York. So mostly the options are gonna be open surgery and the Zyaflex injection. So with the open surgery, there's two different ways you can do it. One is a complete excision where you go in and you try to take out as much as you can. And the other is just taking out a portion, just enough to straighten out the finger. Usually I do a complete excision because if I'm already there, I might as well. The problem with the surgery is it's, it is kind of a big surgery because you can see the incision here. There are these zigzag incisions from the palm all the way into the finger. So we have to zigzag the incisions because you can't cross a crease straight through, otherwise you'll cause a different kind of contracture there. So the scar contracts funny. Um, the recovery from the surgery though is kind of intensive. Um, the more newer innovative treatment for it is the collagenase injection. So this is actually an enzyme injection directed against the collagen. Thing is, is it's not directed directly against the Dupuytren's collagen, it's any collagen. So if you inject it into any tendon or ligament, you can rupture those as well. So it's really important that when you do the injections that you just target that uh, Dupuytren's. So in a recent study, they compared a limited fasciectomy to Zyaflex. Um, it was a retrospective study and they just really called the patients. But what they were looking at is after you had a Zyaflex or the limited uh, excision, how many of those patients then had to have either surgery or repeat injection and how many um, had this perception that their contracture came back. So with an average seven year follow up, what they found is that the Zyflex does result in, you know, more uh, sooner re-intervention, as well as a perception that their contracture had returned. The thing with the Zyflex though is the recovery is much easier than surgery. So moving out to the fingers, the giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath, which sounds crazy, but it's actually very benign doesn't turn into cancer, it's just uh, a mass found in the fingers. This is actually the second most common mass that's found in the fingers. Usually it's found on the volar surface of the fingers and more distally. Uh, the diagnosis of this is by exam as well as uh, MRI findings shown here. So treatment for a giant cell tumor is really to excise it. So we take out the giant cell tumor. The problem is, is that it does have a high recurrence rate with it. Um, with the pathology of it, it's kind of shown here, it's like a sheet of kind of these purple cells as long as well as big giant cells with multiple nuclei. You can also see some hemosiderin deposits in there too, which are kind of the darker dots. Epidermal inclusion cysts are the third most common mass found in the fingers. And this is usually found after trauma. So it's a penetrating trauma, which causes, so penetrating trauma being either a laceration or a puncture that actually pushes the skin into the um, subcutaneous tissues and then it forms this mass. Um, so the diagnosis is, again, on exam, you can feel this round kind of firm mass that's a little bit mobile, typically is not painful, um, but if it keeps growing, what it can do is it, start, it can start eroding the bone. So if you get x-rays and there's a large um, epidermal inclusion cyst there, it can erode the bone, so it does look worrisome, but it's very benign. Um, treatment for this, again, is excision. The good thing with the excision with these kind of masses is that it doesn't usually recur. And then the histology shows is shown here with the cystic mass, keratin on the inside with this epithelial lining. So on the dorsal part of the hand, usually those bumps are gonna be from arthritis. So at the distal aspect or the DIP joints, they're called heberdin nodes. And at the PIP joints, they're Bouchard nodes. But this is really associated with the arthritis. So with arthritis, you do get the joint swelling in the area as well as bone spur formation. And it's really the bone spurs that cause these bumps to show up. The treatment for this is gonna be the usual again, rest, ice or heat, anti-inflammatories. Um, you can try splinting, but I don't know that it's that effective. But activity modification, like any arthritis, is also warranted. Surgery for this is not actually trying to remove the bumps um, because it doesn't really help the symptoms of the pain from the arthritis. So really the treatment is gonna be surgical um, in terms of uh, fusion or arthrogesis or arthroplasty or joint replacement there. 
In the distal joints, that treatment is really just the fusion in that joint. So you're sacrificing motion for pain relief there. In the PIP joints or the middle knuckle, you could, depending on the digit, determines whether or not you would do a fusion or a joint replacement there. And then also in the dorsal distal digit are the mucous cysts that are found. And these are actually ganglion cysts that are associated with the arthritis in that joint as well. And so you can see this ganglion cyst that's on these fingers. And distally in the hard nail, there's a depression in the nail. And that's because of the location of the cyst. It puts pressure where the nail is growing through. So uh, treatment for this, again, rest, ice or heat, anti-inflammatories. Um, you can try to aspirate the cyst and compress it, but a lot of times it will recur. With surgery, you can take the cyst out. And when you do take the cyst out, you actually trace the cyst back to the joint capsule itself. And then you take a piece of that joint capsule out because you're trying to get the root of that cyst out. You go into the joint through that arthrotomy and try to smooth the bone spur as well. And what they found is when you do both those things, the risk of recurrence is lower than if you just try to take the cyst out. Um, and what you do have to explain to patients, however, is that that nail deformity that happens may not improve after the surgery. And then gout. So this is a picture of TOFIS that can happen, happen in the finger. And this is really from uncontrolled gout. So if your gout is a crystalline inflammatory arthropathy, if left untreated or if it's undertreated, then you can develop these tophis that happens in the fingers. And you can even see under the skin, the white kind of crystal deposits that are in there. The biggest problem with these um, tophi are that it can, if they get large enough, they can actually erode through the skin, kind of leak out and it increases the risk for infection. Um, so really the treatment for this is going to be the medical management of gout. If it did need surgery though, um, you can debulk the area, but it's really kind of unsatisfying because it's kind of like taking toothpaste out of hair. But the most important thing with gout is really to manage the medical part of gout. So I very quickly went through a bunch of <laughs> bumps and lumps and masses in the hand. Uh, diagnosis of any of these are, this, are similar to any other you know, orthopedic issue. So it's based on history, your exam, uh, radiologic findings, biopsy at times, as well as histology from the pathologist. And treatment, again, is based on the diagnosis, but usually involves rest, ice or heat, anti-inflammatories, um, and sometimes splinting. A lot of these masses can just be excised, um, and some of them you just need to treat the underlying condition. And my annual plea, please be careful carving your pumpkins. No one wants to cut their finger off or have a flexor tendon injury, so. Thank <laughs> you.